szívesen vitatkoztam volna önökkel az elnökségi programban. I would have been happy to talk to you about the program of our presidency that I presented, but I can see that you're not interested in that. You'd like to organize a party political intifada here. Now, all of these left-wing lies about Hungary, I think, is pure political propaganda. You're parliamentary members of, members of parliament, and if you want to do that, then you can do so. But I was quite surprised... Uh, at what I heard from the President of the Commission, because it's un there are undoubtedly differences of opinion between Hungary and the European Commission. That's clear. And I deliberately didn't uh, raise these, given the fact that as a presidency we are working on Europe's behalf for Europe. And, and I don't think it's right to talk about these differences of opinion when we're here discussing the Hungarian presidency. That's not right. And unfortunately, uh, it wasn't like this before. A former president of the Commission would never have said that. That never would have happened before. In the past, as the tr treaty says, the Commission is the guardian of the treaties. It was a neutral body, and its job was to be the guardian of these treaties. It was to put political debates to one side and deal with differences in a legal manner. But this is now changed, and rather than being a guardian of the treaties, it's a political body, a political weapon, that, that you want to and you want to attack patriots in Europe and people in the Patriots for Europe Party group. Now, I um, intentionally left out Hungary from my um, presentation, but if you want to speak about it, I'll talk about it. I fully reject what you said, President of the Commission. Any comparison with what freedom fighters did in 1956 was a mistake, and it has nothing to do with what happened in 1956, what's going on in Ukraine now. It's a complete mistake to make a comparison between those two things. On behalf of... And I reject any comparison with the um, freedom fighters from 1956. But I would like to say something which is which is uh, common in English, but I can see it's not accepted here. The um, English press says if you want to win, you need to be um, courageous enough to recognize that you face, you may lose. Because we are facing we are we may facing loss on the uh, Ukrainian front, but the the reality is, thanks to the president of the Commission as well, the the European Union has a mistaken policy when it comes to this war. If we want to win, then we need to change this losing strategy that we are currently implementing. It was a poorly planned and poorly implemented strategy. If we continue on that route, we are going to lose. If we don't want Ukraine to lose, then we need to change strategy. And I think that you should consider that. In every war, there needs to be diplomatic work, we need to have communication, direct and um, indirect contacts. If we don't do that, then we will 
go even deeper into war and the situation will be even more desperate, more and more people will die. Hundreds of thousands of people have died, thousands of people are dying while we're talking here and here now. And with this strategy, we won't find any solution in the battlefield. So I think we need to stand up for peace. We need to focus on a ceasefire and create a different strategy because otherwise we will all lose. I don't think it's fair for the President of the Commission to accuse Hungary that we just um, allowed people smugglers. No, that's not true. It arrests people smugglers. And after a period of time, they are expelled from the country. And if they return, they have to stay in prison twice as long. We, we have uh, saved um, Europe from more than 2,000 people smugglers. We should be recognized for that rather than criticized. Several people spoke about European uh, unity, Mr. Weber as well. We believe in unity and diversity. We are never going to accept that European unity means that you tell us what to do and that we should keep quiet if we don't like something. That's not what European unity is. The people have to just keep quiet if they do not agree with the majority or with the Commission. In Hungary, in Parliament, the governing parties have a two-third majority but we never would have seen there what you did here today. We may have a two-third majority, but all parties in the opposition all received posts in committees that they deserve. But you stop the patriots from having those posts, and then you want to lecture us about democracy. That's just, just uh, incredible. Mr. Weber said that nobody uh, talks to us. Well, that's an insult to, the, to those people who have um, spoken to us. In, the, in preparing the Prince Day, I, went, I saw the German Chancellor, I saw the French President in France, and I went to, to Rome as well. Are these, are these nobody? And it's unfortunate that the leader of the EPP is not telling the truth. He says that the Hungarian governing party did not win the European elections in Hungary. We got 45 percent. You got 30 percent in Germany. So who won? And you made personal comments, so I'd like to make some you know, ang anger is not good. We know what the conflict is between us. In 2018, this was one of the key reasons why you couldn't be um, a leader, the head of the commission. I supported you and I promised that I would support you. But then you said that you do not want to become president of the Commission with the votes from Hungarians, and you didn't become the president, and that's why you're ang angry with me. You want to be sitting there where Mr. von der Leyen is sitting, and because of me you're not able to be there, and you're angry with me. But I can't do anything about that. I'm sorry that that you've become a hunger, hungerophobic person. I can't I can't do anything about that. And please do not uh, focus on uh, personal insults uh, rather than on a debate about European issues. Now. I'm si I, and Ms. Ms. Veres, I'd. Um, I think, I think that uh, lack of knowledge is not a good place in a debate. 
Apparently, we have a high taxes in Hungary. We have a 15% um, flat rate income tax. And we have t- the economic growth in Hungary is twice that of the average in the EU. And then you talk about, uh, about the bad figures in Hungary. Are the facts not important to you? And I can see that the member from France, from Renew, does not like the Hungarian constitutional system. You have to accept that we have the right to our own constitution. You say that we discriminate against certain groups based on their lifestyle. That's not the case. The Hungarian constitution allows everybody the right to the way they live their life. And you may not like that, but that's how it will stay. It will, our constitution will defend families. The Hungarian constitutional defense protects marriage, children, and, and in our constitution, it says that marriage is between a man and a woman. And it also says that a man, that father is a man and mother is a woman. You cannot uh, deba- uh, debate me on that. Now, the accusations on corruption, I have to reject those. Now, we could go in this debate where we exchange personal remarks because I'm, I think this body has some expertise when it comes to corruption. And that body wants to talk about corruption in any member state. Are you, are you serious? One of the group leaders said huge numbers of people are leaving Hungary. That's simply not true. There is many people living, uh, Hungarians working abroad, as Austrians in term, proportionately. That's a false uh, perception and it's propaganda. Now, on EU money, I would just like to say that we all know that the money, EU support uh, comes to Hungary, 80% of that goes back to you. 80% goes back, is into the pockets of your companies. And then you want to criticize us because we accept EU funding. Is that logical? And the representatives from the left, well, you're saying that we are against trade unions. Why? No, we come to agreements with trade unions. We, we have recently agreed on a multi-annual wage increase program and, uh, and hopefully we'll also come to uh, more such agreements in the coming years. I didn't bring the word Nazi into this debate. You did. Anti-fascist was mentioned. But a, a, a German citizen who came to Hungary and in the street attacked people uh, walking in that street and caused, and caused significant injuries because they didn't like how those people looked. That is what Nazism is. You can't attack people in the streets in Hungary for those reasons. And then they come to the European Parliament and say, come, come, please allow someone out of prison because they, um, they attack people on the streets and, and assaulted people. And I, I don't think you can ask me to allow um, people who've committed crimes out of Hungarian prisons. The President of the Commission talked about how many Russian people are working in Hungary. I think this is a case of uh, hypocrisy. In Hungary, there are 3,000 working. We gave uh, out uh, 3,000 permits last year. Altogether, there are 7,000 working. Ms. von der Leyen is from Germany. What about Germany? What's the situation like there? There are 300,000 working in Germany. 
and they're from Russia, and then you accuse me? Ms. Perev, in Spain, there are 100,000 Russians working in Hungary, and then you make an accusation against me. In France, 60,000 Russians working there, and then you criticize Hungary, where we have 7,000. Is that fair? And on economic relations, Hungary trades in a transparent manner. But what about your countries? You can see there are many countries from where you have come. Via Asia, circumvent sanctions and trade with uh, Russia. I'll give you some figures. Every month, the European Union exports $1 billion more to certain Central Asian countries than before the Russia-Ukraine war. And why? Because this is how the sanctions are circumvented. German, French, Spanish companies are avoiding sanctions in, in, by doing this. You also mentioned energy. Western countries, you, since the outbreak of the war, have bought Turkish and Indian from Indian refineries oil to the tune of 8.5 billion euros. 8.5 billion, billion euros. This is hypocrisy. In 2023, you Western countries bought 44% more crude oil from Russia than before. The, the tax revenue from these companies went into the uh, Russian coffers, and then you accuse us of friendship with Russia. You are funding them. The truth is, I didn't come here to um, read out these facts to you. I had no intention to do that. I came here to present the program of the Hungarian presidency. And I would have liked to have said that there are problems. I would have liked to have said to the group leaders that there is uh, competitiveness problems, migration is a problem, we need to change. And the Hungarian presidency has some ideas, and we'd like the parliament to support us in that. We, that's why I came here today. But then you have decided to turn it into a party political clash, and I think that's very unfortunate. If you attack us, we will, I will defend my country. Thank you. So I give the floor next to Peter Magyar. Five minutes.